Now, even though the first votes won't even be cast for another six months, this debate is generating, as you know, a ton of interest and expected to get, as I said, monster ratings, record ratings here for cable news. Now, everyone prepping, of course, for Donald Trump, waiting to hear what he's going to say. I think personally, he doesn't even know what he's going to say. But anyway, a lot of people are hoping the debate will turn into reality TV, which, of course, is Trump's specialty. The question is, though, how will it play out? How should it play out? And let's bring in our panel to answer that question and much more. Former Republican New York Congressman Rick Lazio. He's a partner at Jones Walker uh, Firm. And Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author, Republican strategist Bill O'Reilly, or as we say, the good one, and Andrew Whitman, the senior political correspondent. The, the bad right. one. <laughs> we'll get into, we'll get into uh, from a party standpoint, uh, what Republicans want or don't want out of this. Um, we'll actually get into issues, believe it or not. We'll talk about that. Not a lot of people have said that. But first, you've been on the stage where the bright lights have come on. What goes through, and for Trump, this is the first debate he's ever done. He's no stranger mm -hmm. to TV, but this is the first one. And you have this unique format with 10 guys uh, all fighting for oxygen over two hours with commercial breaks. This is something, this is really unique, for good or for bad. What, what is it like at the moment when the red light goes on and they point and you're the candidate and you don't know what happens next? Yeah, first of all, even though Trump hasn't debated before, he is the most experienced TV personality that will be up on that stage. He knows better than any of the other ones on the stage how to play to a camera. So I think he goes into it with a certain comfort level, even though he. And you think have that matters this. more than guys who've done debates on the state level or whatever? I else? do. I do. I, I think that connectivity with the camera and the ability to play an audience uh, in this era is is very important. It's an important asset. What he doesn't have is a depth of knowledge on the issues that some of the other candidates that have spent their life in public policy will have. My guess is they've spent a fair amount of time going into this debate, prepping for it, going through issues, doing some mock uh, debates mm -hmm. themselves, as I've done for presidentials. And, um, and so th they'll, they'll be anticipating how to answer certain questions like on immigration, Planned Parenthood, taxes, the economy, jobs. There'll be a set number of issues that they should be prepared for, and they'll have some answers also if you get stuck on something and you, well, you, you go helped, blank. Uh, people may remember, you helped Romney prep, right, right. in 2012 for the right. debates, right? right? Right. Actually, 2008, I played uh, Giuliani in the, in oh, the, uh, during the primary, <laughs> uh, <laughs> during the primary uh, debates there. So, uh, yeah, you want to keep the candidates relatively calm and comfortable. You don't want them to be uptight and nervous going on there. You don't want them to snap. Uh, you want them to be uh, to be, be likable. I mm -hmm. think the likability factor will be important tonight. The, the person who can turn a joke but be clever and be cutting at the same time. Look for Huckabee to be that person, for really? example, if I had to guess one. Uh, yeah. Dom, there's a question. I know Trump, uh, he's been downplaying expectations all week. Um, but his thing is, hey, I'm not going to bring in a prep thing or whatever else. The, in his argument, uh, off the cuffs work for me so far. Look at the numbers. You buy that, or do you think he's got uh, the equivalent of somebody like Rick who's uh, playing the devil's advocate, who's pushing him into debate prep, they're giving him caged and uh, packaged answers. Uh, you know him better than we do. Uh, what's your expectation from Trump? I don't care what any candidate tells you. They are fully prepared going into a debate like this. <clears throat> now, Trump is going to be Trump. And so I agree with the congressman that he may, he def advantage Donald Trump, live television environment, and that's going to be enough where he's won no matter what tonight. You'll see, I agree, he may bring a lack of knowledge. That wasn't your exact word, but the lack of knowledge is what's gotten him this far. So he doesn't have to come in tonight. People are sick of politicians, no offense, mm. that you know, talk forever and do nothing. But the one difference is that whenever it says no offense, you know you're in trouble. So, and you're offended. But the, the thing for me though, Dom, is that's one thing getting in front of a camera and saying it. It's another thing when you got nine other guys at the stage who all want to take your head off. You make a position, uh, make a statement here, <clears throat> somebody's waiting to rebut you. Right, but it's Trump all the time tonight. Uh, do you think anybody would care about this debate if he wasn't on that stage tonight? No, but I think, Andrew, there's as much peril as their opportunity for him, if not more so. For the folks and the record numbers, Dom's right, they're looking for a food fight mm -hmm. tonight. They want reality TV. Do you think they walk away at 11 o'clock disappointed or not? 
I, I think a lot of viewers will be disappointed. It won't be the food fight that a lot of people are expecting. First of all, Trump's got such a high bar for him in terms of how his perceived and how he performs in front of the camera that it's going to be difficult for him to clear that bar no matter how much he's tried to lower expectations. The other thing is that these debates are fairly rigidly formatted. It's not the free flow that you're used to with Trump. When Trump's at the podium, when he's announcing that he's entering the rest, when he comes down the escalator, that's Trump at his Trumpiest. But, you know, in this format, he, you've got a minute and people are, and you're going with different specific questions and you're going from one candidate to another. But you know he how might it not is. be able to let his personality if, if shine. If somebody's name comes way. out of somebody's mouth, mm -hmm. they got 30 seconds of that person for rebuttal. What I don't know is um, you're Trump. Uh, somebody mentions your name. You answer it and you say, and by the way, Christie can't even balance his own book. Right. Can Christie then respond? Does it go back and forth? Uh, that's going to be up to the moderators right. to figure that out. And, and it's not entirely clear. My, my question is, what if somebody goes after Trump without mentioning him directly by name? Right. You know, some of us who don't have any political experience. Well, is Trump going to take that personally? Is Ben Carson going to? Well, no. But is Trump going to take that personally and start slinging arrows back at that person? And, and if he does, he might look too much like a bully to mm. really be presidential tonight. You counsel a lot of campaigns here. Um, and again, as I said, kind of uncharted territory, Bill, in terms of the format and everything else. If there's one thing that Trump's got to worry about tonight, is it stepping over, stepping on somebody else's time? It, what optics does he have to worry about? Is it the substance or more the perception? I, I, I first want to say, God save the Republic. Because just, <laughs> just the fact that we're going into debate and Donald Trump is the leading candidate, God save the Republic. I mean, we'll talk about that step next. In. Yeah. However, tr Trump has a, has a problem going forward. Trump at some point is going to take himself seriously and his team is going to take him seriously and they're going to tell him to tone it down. And once he tones it down, he's going to be just like the others, yep. but he's going to know less. Like, Trump has to be Trump, but he can't be Trump. He's stuck. He's Trumped. Um, the rest of them, I think, just need to play their own game, be themselves, and trust that in time, Trump will trip himself up. Can they one, do that? One thing, by the way, about Trump, there will be four, five, or six different frontrunners at different points before the actual nomination occurs. Are you both saying that because you I mean, want that to happen? Well, or? no, but Herman Cain, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, Newt Gingrich, Rick Santorum, Bachman, it was, yeah, everyone traded. Yeah, Perry for a right. while, Rick Perry. Uh, so, you know, we, I, I, don't, I don't think Trump will ever lead twice. I think Trump will carry it until he drops and then he'll be done. Okay, but what's the scariest thing for you as it relates to the Republican electorate liking the message? Yeah, I, well, I think what's going on in both parties right now is that there's a real appeal to populism. People are angry and frustrated, they want simplistic answers. And they're looking for purists. They're not looking for compromisers. They're not looking for people that are incrementalists, which honestly is how you get things done in government. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we're in a conflicted situation right now, but in my view, between what really works and what people believe that they want. And so they're drawn to Bernie Sanders, who is absolute, an absolutist, or Trump, who's bombastic and talking tough. They, want, they, don't, they don't want to hear about the fact that it's a messy thing to have a Republican. You have a... A, a board of directors of 435, 535 people in the Senate and the, and the uh, House of Representatives. They want someone who's going to, gosh darn it, get it done. They're going to kick Iran's butt. They're going to make sure okay. they don't have news. And, and Iran's going to pay for it. Oh, right. pay for so, it. So, let me ask, so let me ask you guys, you're counseling, right, you're counseling any of the other nine. Mm -hmm. are, are there different agendas for each one? Sure. Do you do what Bill says if you're Jeb Bush, for example, or even Walker and say, this too shall pass. They just got to get through this window here where, you know, people are crazy and they're looking at this guy seriously. Or if you're Christie, are you like my first guest? You say, start lobbing bombs as soon as you get there on the stage. You know, as soon as the mics turn on, go after Trump. You got nothing to lose. Well, Christie's at 4% or whatever he is. So he's in a different position because he is far back in the pack and has been losing ground. And um, also, Trump kind of took his narrative as the straight-talking guy, right? Yeah, right, exactly. And, you know, he might, he might press him on entitlements or one of the things where he's saying, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm being straight with, uh, with the electorate. But for many of them, every time they mention Donald Trump, they're giving Trump more attention and more legitimacy. And, uh, you know, I'm not so sure if you're Jeb Bush that you take on. I mean, he's got some things to clear up right. here. He's got some things to prove during this debate to, because he's made, has had some missteps. But I'm not so sure if I was Scott Walker, for example, that I would tangle with Donald Trump if that really helps him. I and you guys agree? I, you think I, so? I, I agree, and I also agree that, that this debate is also about Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush stumbled a little bit this week. He, was, he wasn't clean, he wasn't clear, he wasn't articulate. He needs to be tonight, that's important. I also agree with the Congressman pick of Mike Huckabee. 
Huckabee's someone who's got the perceived moral authority that can step in and say to Trump, now there, mm -hmm. no, no more of this. There's something about Huckabee that I think can pull it off more than anyone else. I agree with Walker, don't tangle it, wait it out for the long term. The others, the Christies, they, they may take a long shot. They may but throw a grenade in there. But if you're a if you're a Dominic, um, you know, a Carson or whatever, what do you have to lose? Um, well, Kasich has a lot to lose. He's on his home court advantage. So he's going to do very well tonight. And from the state that he's from, the stakes couldn't be higher for, for either party, uh, Ohio. But the one that has a lot to lose, I don't, think, I don't think the bar is high at all for Donald Trump tonight. All he has to do is be himself. The one that has a lot to lose tonight is Jeb Bush. First impressions are very, very important. And right now, if, if Bush comes off tonight as a little boy that Donald Trump is lecturing, that's not good for the man that appears to be the preemptive, uh, if you will, Demo uh, Republican nominee. And so, in my opinion, Bush has to find a way to stand up to Trump, toe to toe, equal, equal, because right now they're not equal. It's Donald Trump up here, Jeb Bush down there Imagine below. Imagine if I told you guys what Dominic said frighteningly accurately in June. You would have laughed me yeah. out of here. I put stones yeah. in my pocket and <laughs> went into the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quick first prediction. I, I think Bush, Walker, Rubio, and Kasich will, will take the high road and try to act presidential. I think Huckabee, Christie, and Paul will be a little bit more aggressive. I think Ben Carson may be out of his element and may be exposed tonight. Mm. I think he's he might be... You know, he's going to be surrounded by heavyweights, and I don't know if he's ready to play in that. All right. Pool. Now, whatever we say, here we are, you know, well into August now, and Donald Trump is 10 percentage points beyond the closest competitor, and some would even argue at this table, this dynamic tonight probably suits him better than the others. So what about this for the grand old party here? Um, what are some of the dangers, and what do they really want, the party fathers, to come out of this evening in Cleveland? We'll talk about that straight ahead.